The people of Afghanistan have seen turmoil and conflict for much of the past 40 years, driven by internal divisions and foreign interests. The Soviets invaded in the late 1970s. The Taliban rose to power in the 1990s. And then there was the US invasion in 2001. 20 years on, the Americans are still there, but President Biden has promised the mission will finally end on August the 31st. There have been elections and initiatives aimed at bringing peace and stability to Afghanistan, but without success. After years of trying to facilitate political reconciliation between the Taliban, the Afghan government, the United States and other countries, the US signed an agreement with the Taliban in Doha to withdraw its troops. In exchange, the Taliban agreed not to support any other armed groups or attack US forces or their allies. But after years of conflict, where civilians were often the victims, are the different sides within Afghanistan ready to move forward? We've been quite flexible and also tolerant since the start of the talks. We have a new generation of Afghans who has never experienced the Taliban regime. So we need to be adaptable to, to this new young generation of Afghans. Uh, uh, therefore, the sooner we stop fighting, the sooner we concentrate in focus in reaching a deal where the international community is eagerly waiting for us Afghans to work together and to reach a compromise. With US troops gone by the end of August, Afghanistan's affairs will have to be solved internally. Can they overcome the wounds left by years of disagreement and sectarian division? After months of intra-Afghan talks, have they built trust? About uh, this taking of 193 district that we have uh, taken during the past uh, two, eight months, and it's not uh, by military force. Uh, their forces, the Kabul administration forces, have joined us because they are fed up uh, with the fighting and also the slow progress in the peace process. But we are restraining ourselves, not taking. Once again, both sides met at the negotiation table in Doha, and that's where we caught up with the chief of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Abdullah Abdullah, talks to Al Jazeera. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, Chairman, High Council for National Reconciliation, thank you very much for talking to Al Jazeera. You're welcome. It's been 48 hours since you've been in Doha. We last met 10 months ago. Uh, describe to us what has happened in the last 10 months and how closer are Afghans to finding peace? Uh, I can say that, to, to begin with, that it was a real 48 hours. And uh, yes, from Afghanistan, a delegation uh, from senior leadership of Afghanistan uh, were here together with us. Uh, and uh, the idea behind this was that we, we came here and present our unified view in support of peace. Uh, because the choice is not between one side overtaking militarily and then there will be peace. Uh, uh, but it is between uh, that scenario which will not lead to peace, which will lead to the continuation of the war for many, many, many years to come and further complication of the situation, uh, the potential civil war and all of that. Involvement of other countries and between uh, an inclusive, peaceful settlement. Uh, so we came here to present our unified view that uh, there is, this is the opportunity to seize it and to capitalize on it. And of course, pe peace will not materialize overnight, but to, to, to give them our assurance that we are serious, we are sincere. Meanwhile, uh, to assure them that there will be no military solution. Um, uh, insisting on a military solution will lead to, uh, to the continuation of the suffering of our people. It was an opportunity to know one another better because in the earlier uh, uh, situations or, or with the beginning, or in the inauguration of the talks, uh, we had only speeches from both sides. And then later on, there was an opportunity for me in Moscow, but that was a short uh, uh, a 
opportunity. Uh, and in between, the delegations have met in different parts. Uh, so it was important for us. Now I have much, much more clarity in my mind. Uh, and also they should, ha they should be very clear about our positions. And still I see uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, common points uh, which, need to, which need to work on it. Speaking to you, you're always an optimist about uh, the success of uh, dialogue and negotiations. Uh, but 10 months have passed in trying to know each other. The positions that both sides had for each other remain almost the same. What gives you hope that there is going to be peace? Because the situation on the ground uh, seems to be pointing otherwise. No, the, the reason for us coming here was not to present our position and say that take it or leave it. Uh, the, I'm not uh, commenting on the attitude of uh, uh, our interlocutors, uh, but this was not our attitude. We, we, we came here to tell them that uh, peace is difficult, more difficult than war, and we are here with flexibility to, to find uh, common grounds. And then, and then, and then move on uh, towards a peaceful settlement. Uh, and also, if there is any illusion uh, somewhere that one side can win militarily, uh, we argued that this will not going to happen. Uh, yes, of course, personally, as a person, which uh, now I have this responsibility. But apart from that, which has been uh, grown during during the war. Uh, in at least uh, in the past 36 years of my life, I've been involved in the politics or, or, or fighting in Afghanistan one way or another. Well, you were the defense minister in 1996? So. Uh, I was the spokesperson for the defense minister, and later on I was, I, I was the chief of staff for the minister of defense and also um, the uh, spokesperson for the ministry of defense and later on the minister of foreign affairs. In earlier. Uh, in the resistance in jihad against the Soviets, Soviet occupation of, occupation of Afghanistan. To see the continuation of the uh, suffering of our people, to see the countries which we helped to achieve peace, like Tajikistan, Afghanistan was instrumental uh, and, uh, in, in, in achieving that settlement between, uh, between uh, two sides in Tajikistan. And to see them develop, developed, and to see the opportunities which are there, for the people of Afghanistan and for the region. And we cannot utilize it because of the continuation of the war. It is disappointing. One day more is one, missed, one more missed opportunity. Uh, but it takes both sides. Uh, it cannot happen with the goodwill and intention of one side. That's what I was going to come towards, because it takes two parties to reach sure. peace. Um, you say that you've presented the options, military, is, military solution is not viable, it will not result in peace. Uh, but the situation on the ground is that the Taliban are making advances. They've taken t more than 200 out of the 400 districts in Afghanistan. Uh, they're surrounding uh, population centers and provincial capitals. Um, and they seem to have not moved from the demands, whether it was the release of prisoners, whether it was delisting from the UN list. Um, so many people are left wondering then what is the point in talking and including people from your side who have been asking this question that you know we've been at the same place for the last 10 months unfortunately the negotiations which the start of it was was a good point that the fact that we we were here and we started negotiations after many many years of fighting with one another that was that was good that is the good part in the fact that the door for the negotiations is not uh, is not shut at the moment. That's also important. In spite of the differences, in spite of wide gaps which exist between the views of both sides. Uh, since we think that uh, peace is, a peaceful settlement is much, much better option than the continuation of the war, we, continue, we will continue to make these efforts. Uh, we, we will not say, OK, now no negotiations. The reality is that the war is intensifi has intensified. The level of violence is, uh, is uh, intensively high. Uh, and the people are suffering on a daily basis, days in and out. So in this sort of situation, to say, OK, because there is no significant progress, so we stop 
we stop uh, talking to one another, uh, that will not be the, the right option as well. What about your Western partners and expectations uh, from, because of the Afghan government uh, has achieved what it has, uh, with the help of its Western allies? Um, first, I would like you to touch upon the role of the United States, because the sentiment from amongst your team members is that they feel abandoned by the United States. It hasn't given the Afghan government uh, the kind of support that it needed to establish peace, um, and they feel betrayed. The, uh, the, there are different feelings about it, but the fact of life is that they decided what they wanted to, to decide about. And the previous administration had made that decision, and the current administration uh, uh, continued on that basis, and, and the uh, withdrawal will be completed in a few days' time, complete withdrawal of the troops. Uh, so that's a fact of life. Uh, but uh, it's not like abandoning Afghanistan. That's the, that's also an opportunity, an opportunity. And that's also an opportunity not just, just for us, for the Taliban. If they want to be part of a system and work together uh, uh, for a peaceful uh, uh, settlement, uh, that's the way forward. The, these opportunities will be there for them. Idea of delisting, the minute there is peaceful settlement, delisting will take place. But somewhat they think that it has to happen beforehand as conditions, because they think that this was promised to them. And of, according to Doha agreement between uh, the Taliban and the United States, and the United States is also saying that Taliban have not fulfilled uh, their uh, promises. And I, I mentioned this, that this is between you and the United States, and, and we respected Doha agreement, and we supported this uh, Doha agreement and cooperated with it. But uh, we're not here to clarify. Uh, the United States has very valid points uh, saying that Taliban have not implemented uh, what they had promised to do. So these are, these are the, the type of discussions that we, are, uh, we were having. But the good thing was that we decided to continue at this level as well, while meanwhile instructing our, uh, our negotiation, negotiating teams uh, to expedite their efforts, to find ways, innovative ways, uh, if uh, out of uh, many, many uh, agendas, uh, uh, we have only addressed four of them, if out of nearly 50 uh, agenda items, only four is being addressed and the war continues, that's not the pace uh, that, will, that will get us there, because the war will create its own momentum. Obviously, but it, it requires both sides to come together sure. and expedite the talks. It can't be a one-way street. Um, coming back to expectations from the West, uh, speaking to uh, diplomats uh, who have been closely monitoring and are involved in the process uh, that is taking place in Afghanistan, uh, there was a sense that they felt that there needs to be a sobering uh, of the reality on the ground on part of the Afghan government, which hasn't happened. There is still talk about, you know, within three months we're going to retake all the areas that have been taken by the Taliban. Uh, we will teach them a lesson and we will take them back to where they were. And that seems to be the rhetoric coming from Kabul as well. So as long as there is no real sense of realization that they have the momentum of the fighting behind them, they've taken that many areas, then it might be time uh, to concede. To concede to what? To concede to what? The, the solution. Is, is, that, is that a viable option? No, absolutely not. That will never happen. The, in the war, in the fighting, you will have upsets, you, you will have setbacks, you will have back and forth, uh, which recently, because of the, the way that the, the withdrawal of the international troops took place, talk, Taliban took advantage of that. Today, it's not just the army, it's the people which are resisting. Like, yes, of course, they saw the vacuum, they saw a gap, and then they took advantage of it. Now the people are resisting. Can one group in Afghanistan force its, its will upon the whole nation by force, through fighting. It will never happen. That's why I said that uh, we came here to say that, look, from one side, there is an opportunity uh, to have peaceful settlement. From the other side, if the thinking is that we will, we will capture areas, district after, after district, and that will lead to us imposing a, a military solution. And that military solution, we want to get it through talks 
that will not happen. We need to have inclusive peaceful settlement. So rhetorics, one way or another, I'm not that much in favor of those rhetorics. Uh, yeah, but uh, the fact that uh, uh, the army's uh, uh, the army's uh, mission is not to is not to uh, to to, uh, to say that okay let's come and take us uh, they will uh, they will they will they will talk according to to their to their mission. Now let me quote President Rashid Ghani just a few weeks ago saying that the U.S. decision to leave Afghanistan is a decision moment for the Taliban, the region, and Afghans themselves. The choice ahead is clear coalesce around an acceptable end state in Afghanistan or continue the dangerous power grabbing alternative. Who is continuing on the path of the power grabbing alternative? Because if you speak to the other side, so they you, accuse you the Afghan know. government. No, if you, you look at it from you your perspective, earlier. it's the Taliban. You, you mentioned earlier that they have captured, uh, they have captured uh, so many districts in the past, what, in the past uh, few weeks or months. What does that mean? What does that mean when there is, uh, when there is an opportunity for talks? Uh, why not to get seriously into the issues which are uh, uh, which are there and find uh, find a way for solving it? Uh, so it's uh, it's very clear what is being said, and also the situation is very clear. On the ground in Afghanistan, you've you, you've been seeing all of the concerns which have been raised by the international community, the articles being put forth and the research by think tanks, talking about timelines of the collapse of Kabul once again and uh, the government is going to fall. Do you think that it is a realistic assessment? And how hopeful are you that the Afghan government, in its current shape and form, will be able to protect all of the hard-fought freedoms that the Af Afghan people have achieved in the last two decades. Uh, so in the areas which are uh, under the Taliban control at the moment, unfortunately those freedoms, those, those uh, rights which the people were enjoying uh, and the achievements which were made have, has been re reversed. That's also a fact of life. And the point is that uh, uh, the, in our side, uh, the uh, what we presented in the past 48, uh, 40, uh, 48 hours uh, was that uh, we have different opinions about the way of life, about the governance and all of that. Can we get together while maintaining our views about human rights, women's rights, freedom of speech? Uh, they should, being here, they should have learned uh, from Al Jazeera. <laughs> Al Jazeera being here, uh, his, his main headquarters being here, and that's what is, what is going on when, when you talk about freedom of speech. So we have different opinions about these things. Can we find ways to not to fight for imposing our way of life upon the people, but to, to compete for it, uh, to contest for it uh, through civilian means, through peaceful means? That's the whole thing. Uh, Taliban cannot convert the whole population of Afghanistan into Taliban. Talibanization of Afghanistan is not acceptable. Yes, of course, they feel at this moment uh, that they have the upper hand militarily on the ground, uh, and that will not last that way, I'm sure. Uh, I'm not talking about days and weeks, I'm talking about the course of time because that's the lesson from our history. So the sooner we get to the other fact uh, uh, in reality of life that uh, you, cannot, you cannot impose your will upon the whole nation through military might, even if you have that opportunity, that should compel them and also uh, as I mentioned, we are ready to, to talk about. But my question was, how future. confident are you that the Afghan government is going to be able to prevail, to protect those freedoms, and assure the Afghan people that it is here in the long run and it will continue to be there? For no, the, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, if there, is no, if there is no peaceful settlement, unfortunately, the war will continue. And as a result of the war, things will change. Um, areas will go hand to hand. Uh, that apart, uh, um, uh, if you're talking about the survival of the state, I, I, sh I should say that yes, 
while, while uh, the Islamic Republic, there, are, there is opposition, there are diff different groups uh, which are not happy with our conduct, but are, uh, they criticize us, uh, they are unhappy, but at the same time, uh, they agree with the principles. Uh, uh, in the principle of a republic, uh, one person, one vote, and certain other principles. Um, uh, if you're talking about the survival of the state, yes. But how, how cohesive? Is that is is is, is 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 that uh, a coalition, so to speak, of uh, people in Kabul? Because as you were coming here, we saw those differences once again. You you weren't able to convince uh, former President Karzai, Gulbuddin Hikmatyar, to come and join you in these talks with the Taliban to convince the Taliban uh, that there is no military solution. Uh, on the on the principle of, uh, I, I I have no doubt, and you can ask them uh, on the on that one principle that there is no military solution, they have given their messages. You refer to former President Karzai, you, you refer to Mr. Uh, Gulbuddin Hikmatyar, they all have said this, they all have stated that. And in the, in the discussions which were going on there in Kabul as well, uh, there were these, these, these issues. But meanwhile, um, it was expected, I'm not saying uh, that it, it was a clear um, promise. It was expected that some other senior leaders of Taliban also come from from Pakistan. Those who are based in Pakistan, uh, and that was one of the main reasons uh, that those leaders didn't participate. But talking about former President Karzai, uh, he accompanied me up to the airport, uh, and uh, his support. And he spoke um, before us uh, before our departure. So that. On the issue of peaceful settlement, I don't think that those who have not participated, that's because they don't, they don't believe in it, or they believe that there is a military solution. Very the message quickly, is very clear. Uh, very quickly, we need to discuss about what is happening in the region as well. The Taliban have not just taken areas inside Afghanistan, they've taken at least four major border crossings into Afghanistan. Um, again, we're seeing a lot of rhetoric, you're not a man who supports rhetoric from Kabul, uh, about how they're being supported from outside powers and how they're getting support. What is the role that the region is playing and are you hopeful that there's a positive role that can be played by uh, regional powers in Afghanistan? Uh, I will be very very brief. There is one role uh, that the, the, re the region can play, and it will be in their legitimate interest. That's support for peaceful settlement, the inclusive peaceful settlement. Uh, okay, different attitudes, different, different conducts, um, uh, no time to comment on them, but uh, there is only one way forward to support inclusive peaceful settlement. This will be in the interest of the region. Three days back, there was a conference, there was a conference in Tashkent. How the ideas of those conferences like that? That conference was on connectivity, railway between, um, uh, from Central Asia to, to, to Pakistan, from, from, from uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, to Pakistan through Afghanistan and other connectivity projects, which it was an important event. How those, I, I, those ideas will materialize without peace in Afghanistan? You have been um, riding on a lot of hope from the Afghan people. Ever since these talks started, this was a unique opportunity in two decades that Afghans finally are sitting across the table with Afghans. Uh, this is going to be looked back by people in history. Uh, They're going to say this is a pivotal moment uh, where peace could have been achieved in Afghanistan. How hopeful are you that those expectations are going to be met and you're going to be able to convince the other side uh, that peace is the only solution and without it, uh, there is going to be further suffering of the Afghan people? Uh, one thing I can, I can say in this respect that this is the wish of the absolute majority of the people of Afghanistan. And this is the only way forward which is in the interest of the, Afghan, the Afghan people in high interest of our, uh, our country. Uh, and uh, one, one thing which I can assure our countrymen, men and women, uh, that I will not spare any moment to make efforts. If there is a small opportunity, we need to, we need to, we need to uh, capitalize on it. Uh, and uh, as guarantee that all these efforts 
uh, will, will produce the same results that the people are expecting. Even in the past 10 months, uh, part of our population are disappointed why these things have not, have not happened. One thing which I can say is that I will I'll spare no effort uh, in, 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 in trying to build consensus around it and, 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 and move forward uh, and, and make sure that no opportunity is missed. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, Chairman, How Council for National Reconciliation. Thank you very much for talking to you all today. Thank you.